Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we are taking a look at a new AJAZ aluminum keyboard that was sent out to me by Whatly for review. Now, I know very little about this, though what I have seen reminds me a lot of the Zoom 98. This is the Ajax AC100 and is a 1800 aluminum with the display of what I have been seeing lately um, besides a whole bunch of aluminum 75% that are great are new people coming into the hobby but they're so used to full-size keyboards that they feel that anything smaller um, they might be missing out on something so a lot are asking for either full size or some are actually saying okay the 1800 is good enough I think an 1800 is a better layout than a full size in my opinion but i can understand people wanting to be you know work with something that's familiar but for me an 1800 took like that to get used to when i first tried one and i'm actually kind of fond of them because for all intents and purposes if i'm using a 75 percent or tkl um or 75 percent of my numpad i'm basically replicating the 1800 almost i mean depending if you have that one u0 or an actual two u0 but for the most part it works i i have no problem using an 1800 over a full size so i am glad to see that some of the manufacturers are stepping up because for a while there wasn't there weren't that many good choices for full size aluminum or full size mechanical keyboards i mean the Yes, there's always been the gaming ones, but um, as far as solid work, you know, that could also serve as gaming keyboards that were gasket mounted, that offered good switches, good keycaps right out of the bat, there wasn't that many choices. So we're starting to see more full size 1800s come into the, into the game, into the in stock market and they're in stock they're quite affordable and they're attracting those people that you know may not have known about a lot of people don't know about mechanical keyboards so they're like what's the difference like my computer came with a keyboard i think that this market will continue to grow and i'm curious to see i mean i do know i believe one of the uh, Linux laptop manufacturers, I think, came out with a keyboard, but I think it's just a rebranded keyboard. But I wonder how long it'll be before you'll be able to go to Dell or Alienware or one of these, you know, or HP, one of these computer sites and actually have a selection for a mechanical keyboard and maybe some that are not theirs, but are third party that you can add, you know, when you're checking out and you're buying a new PC gives you all the options for software, extra hardware, webcams, everything. But to have a selection for mechanical keyboards in that section, I think we'll see it sooner rather than later. But that's just my guess. Anyway, without going into the weeds, let's go ahead and take a look at this AJAZ AC100 and see what it has to offer. First, let's see what's in the box. So before taking a look at the keyboard, I do like to take a look at what's inside of the box. Here we have a user manual. And it looks to be in several different languages and pretty complete. In the accessories box that got a little beat up. I think it might have been my fault. We have a USB-C to USB-A cable. It is a nice uh, nylon braided. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller. And we have an extra set of switches. As I always tend to say, I appreciate when manufacturers include extra switches because you never know what could go wrong. Switches are the smallest, easiest part to replace. So having some extra ones is really nice. Oh, well, that's an interesting switch. From the style, I want to say it's a box switch, but it's very different. The housing on it, the shape on it, it's quite different. There's no branding. None that I can see anyway. So I'm going to guess it's an Ajaz switch. It is a long pull. And it's a, um, 
I had to guess, I would say it's a progressive spring because it starts out really light and gets heavier as you go down. It has a more muted bottom out than most long poles. And I mean, that's a long pole. That's probably at least like a, probably a 3.5, 3.6 travel. But it's much more muted, not quite as sharp. And we also include the uh, LED diffuser here in the window, which does come out. But as always, it's greatly appreciated when some extra switches are included. And here we are with the AJAZ AC100. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but some especially aluminum keyboards, will come in plastic wrapping. They do this so that you can inspect the keyboard and ensure that there's no Mars on the finish because basically it's like, you know, hey, once you remove the sticker, you're basically saying, hey, everything is fine with the way that the keyboard looks and this looks fine. I see no damage whatsoever. So let's go ahead and open it up. And in the flesh, we have the AJAZ AC100, or as I saw somebody else mention it, they're like, a QK 100 Lite. <laughs> um, I do not have the QK98 or 100. Not sure which one that is, but from the pictures, it does look quite familiar. We have an interesting design there on the bottom. We have a pocket and a branded 2.4 gigahertz dongle. We have switches for the mode, both connectivity and OS. And we also have a screen as well as an LED diffuser bar. So as you can see, we have a nice 1800 layout with a full 2U0. That is very, very nice. And it sounds really good, all except this, uh, this backspace. Let's see what's going on over here. Um, it does look like we have a gasket mounted FR4 plate. All right. And we have plate mounted stabilizers. That one just came right on out with my finger. But let's see. And we do have lubrication in there. We don't have that much. But these do seem to be older style. And taking a look deeper into the PCB. It does not look like we have the ability to install screw-in PCB stabilizers. So let's see if we can get these. Maybe they just weren't locked in place. You'd be surprised what just locking this tab in place will do for a lot of screw-in stabilizers. All right. We do have um, not only markings on the plate, tell us what key goes there, but we have a south facing three and five pin compatible hot swap PCB. We have the high fine layers with the PET above the PCB, as well as the IXPE above the PET layer. And it does feel like we have some sort of closed cell foam below the PCB, as well as a foam that feels like pull on between the plate and the PCB. Have nice tolerances for the switch going into the plate. Oh, okay. Oh, that's much better. It was just, I don't think the um, stabilizer was seated all the way in the plate. Ah, much better. I dare say this is the best AJAZ keyboard or the best sounding AJAZ keyboard I have reviewed to date. And the finish on here, while it's like a brown, it's almost like a red at the same time. And then these keycaps, I gotta say, I actually am quite liking these keycaps. Let's give them a closer look. All right, so they are double shot. They do feel like PVT to me. And we have 1.4 millimeter double shot, what I assume is PVT keycaps and cherry profile. So we have a very, very nice set of keycaps. Um, we have the one U modifiers on the right of the um, space bar. And we have some sub legends showing us what we've got as far as like mission control for Mac. Um, looks like record FPS, 
looks like we have some functions here that we'll have to take a look at the software to see what they do. We have the light effects, dim and brighten, and that speed, that seems to be the light effects as well. It might be for that bar. And we have the navigation keys. That's why basically we have everything. I mean, the navigation column is six keys. Here we got two, and here we got four. Now, yes, we don't have the pause, the screen lock, um, the scroll lock, pause, scroll lock, pause break, scroll lock, print screen. But we do have those mapped. Well, they're going to be mapped on a layer below here. Um, but scroll lock and pause break, keys that we don't use that often, but obviously we can always, if they're keys that we need, we can always add them to a function layer below. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. That's real nice. So let's see, function here. All right, so this is the light controls. This is effects. Let's just change individual colors. All right, so we can use function enter and function page up, page down to go through the screen. It looks like we have the AJAZ animation there. We have volume control, so function enter, and we can... Yeah. Function down actually brings the volume up. Page up brings the volume down, okay? We can select the brightness, the speed, the colors, and the effects, and go to the information screen. We'll have to take a look if we have control over that light bar there. But I've got to say, I'm digging the design. It has like a band of aluminum going down the middle. But then that brown is carried on both the bottom and the top. So it's almost like a three-piece case, even though I don't believe that it is. I'm going to guess that that's probably a frame that's attached to the bottom. So it's going to be another day where I come back and open it up. Not today, because we're going to stick stock. But I've got to say, I love that it has the full size zero. Um, that's something that some 1800s just don't do. I mean, they either decide on going with the full size shift, shifting this over, making this a little bit smaller. But this layout, I like, and it works for me. Um, the only thing that I would need to do is map the print screen. Um, you know, actually, I don't use that all that much anymore. I've got it actually <laughs> mapped to a key combo on my mouse. So um, we do have the uh, sub legends for Macintosh on here. Like I said, also for the mission control. I actually, I really love how this keycap set. I mean, it seems to be their own. This is more of a gray, beige gray. Not, not really a, a white, but it's offset just a little. It's almost offset towards the green. And then it has the brown legends and that opposite when it comes to the modifiers. But then it's got these copper colored um, extra modifiers. I really like the set. Honestly, I wish they would have included a, a few more keycaps in case I wanted to do some, some modifications. But it's really just a nice slick looking 1800 just the specs today we are taking a look at the ajaz ac 100 1800 100 key aluminum three mode keyboard with a tft display it has a flex cut gasket mount fr4 plate as well as a flex cut three and five pin south facing hot swap pcb including dampening and hi-fi layers it is preloaded with Ajaz Butter Ice Cream Linear Switches and Double Shot PBT Cherry Keycaps. This keyboard comes weighing in at a massive 2,206 grams and is loaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity battery. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters off the typing surface, while the back sits at 32 millimeters, providing for an angle of typing of 6.5 degrees. The MSRP on this keyboard starts at $114.99 and goes up from there depending on options. This keyboard is available from wetgeek.com, links below. Well, I gotta say, I am loving this hunk of uh, aluminum. I don't want to say metal, but technically it's an alloy, right? 
<laughs> anyway, this hunk of keyboard is one of the heaviest keyboards I have in my collection at over two kilos. <laughs> this is a keyboard. This is one of those keyboards that's like, oh, I can use it to work. And I can also use it as a weapon to defend myself. <laughs> it is um, a hunk of hunk of keyboard. Um, it has the hi-fi layers, so it sounds great. It has these keycaps that are just really well done. Um, I went and looked through the different, because uh, they have a number of combinations for this one. Plain white, plain black. Um, some of them have actually uh, Latin sayings on the back of them instead of a design. Um, and they have some really cool colorways that I don't think, I mean, they might be similar to others, but I don't think they're copying any. I think they're coming up with their own colorways for not only the keycaps, but the bodies of the keyboard. They all have this silver band, but they have different colors when it comes to the bottom and the top half. So this is quite an interesting keyboard. Like I said, I don't have the QK100, so I can't compare it to it. But QK100 is not an in-stock keyboard. This one is. Um, that is a big deal. It's a big difference because rather than pre-ordering and having to wait for a shipping window and I might get it in two months, I might get it in three months. No, you place the order, you'll, you have a tracking number within a day or two and then you'll receive it. Uh, what Geek, they're pretty good at shipping. I think I've actually received items in less than a week from What Geek. This to me is one of the better if not the best 1800 inside keyboard that I've seen. And it's just crazy how much of a 180 I've done on Ajaz in just the last like two and a half, three months because Ajaz was a brand that I wasn't very fond of for a long time. One of the first or the first Ajaz I got was the AK33, which is just a cursed layout. It has the weirdest sizes of keys. I mean, the, the arrow keys are like one, one and a quarter or one and a half. Um, it has keys that really no keycap set's going to fit it. And it just, from there, I've had several AJAS. Now, I do have one, I can't remember, I never can remember the model number of it, that I actually use with my tablet. Um, it's kind of just in my backpack, um, like... Sometimes we, we go without power for a few days, so we pack up and go to the, the motel, and, and I have that in my, my to-go backpack, let's say, um, it, and with a tablet. And I always keep them fully charged and keep them in there because the tablet fits into the little slot. It's just a 60% with a knob and a slot for a tablet. That one I love. I map the keys to how I need it to map, and it works for what I need it to do when I'm using a tablet, kind of like a PC, but not really. You know, it's more when I'm, it's kind of like a vacation setup. You know, I, I, it's limited so that I can't do too much work on it kind of thing. But anyway, besides that, I've reviewed numerous AJAZ boards over the years. And I just, I found that the software was kind of funky or they didn't have layers or they just had weird things about them. But in the last few months, the AJAZ boards that I've been reviewing, they've only gotten better and better. It's like they increase their design team and say hey guys let's build keyboards that people want and they're doing that um, they're putting out some really great keyboards in the last i want to say last two or three ajaz keyboards i have been very satisfied with like i said this one i in my opinion is the best sounding and feeling ajaz out of the box to date especially being an aluminum so because i have a couple of ajaz aluminum older ones, the 75% with the P sign. Uh, I can't remember what the model number of that one is. Anyway, I like where Ajaz is going. I like the direction they continue to go into, and I continue to be satisfied with what I'm seeing. All right, so I took a quick look at the software. Once you download the software and you connect your device, it'll come into, it should automatically throw you into the first home page though it might show it and then you have to select the actual keyboard so the keyboard gives us in this in the settings section gives us the ability to set, set sleep time as well as disable it. it allows us to set key response time as well as disable certain keys going to the layers we see that we have a top layer and we have a function layer 
We also have momentary and toggle. Momentary being like a tap and toggle actually meaning toggling over and turning that other layer on. So it, this is a pretty complete, even though you know we have an 1800, um, we still have the function layer, which extends the use of this keyboard. Not only that, we can have numerous profiles with different settings for each top and function layer. We have a very basic macro manager, uh, which allows you to save um, mouse and keyboard inputs and bind them to function or key combinations. We also have a selection for our lighting modes. And then in the screen section, we have a section now, I've had some files where when I first upload it, it just only shows it as one frame, and then I have to re-upload it again, and then it shows as multiple frames. So I'm still trying to figure out what that's all about because like I loaded up this X, which I had the animation going before the same file, but now it just shows 50, but it doesn't actually show the frames. So I went and switched to this uh, Dancing Wednesday GIF, selected it, and once I selected it, it showed that it actually had frames, had 40 frames, and I went ahead and previewed it to make sure that it was animating. And then, I don't know why, but I always had time sync, um, just to make sure that the time is synced, I've already synced it anyway. Then I uploaded it to the keyboard. It was a fairly quick upload. And as soon as it was done, it was visible on the screen on the keyboard. So we have a solid aluminum keyboard. We have a decent closed source, uh, though as it may be, software that allows us to, in one package, upload um, GIFs or animations or just pictures to the screen, as well as have numerous profiles. And each of those profiles allows us to have a top layer and a function layer. Looking at all the different ones that they have, it's really, it's almost like a, I don't know, to me it feels like, anyway, uh, gotta, gotta catch them all kind of thing. Because they all do have a very specific design uh, to them, you know, with the keycaps, with the, the way that they're engraved down below. Uh, I know they don't have weights, it would have been cool to see weights. But I'm guessing it would probably would have pushed the price up of this keyboard. Um, as it is, I think it's a uh, four in stock aluminum 1800. I think it's pretty good for what it offers. It would be nice if we had an option for QMK and Maya, and then a separate, you know, executable for the screen. But I know that's, I believe that's coming. Uh, I, we, we're seeing it more often. Um, yes, there's a lot of closed source Maya implementations, but we've been seeing more and more QMK via keyboards. So um, I think that a lot of manufacturers are realizing that a couple extra dollars in the MCU, uh, spending on the MCU and allowing, you know, the functionality to, and, and it doesn't have to be QMK, ZMK, um, TMK, there's a couple of different ones. ZMK is wireless out of the box and works with a lot of popular uh, microcontroller units that would work just fine. But not to get into the weeds. I think we'll be seeing more of these along the way. Anyway, uh, this is a very solid um, unit. I'm actually, uh, it's been a while since I've, I've, I've um, daily driven an 1800, but I'm gonna be putting this on my desk once I finish with production. I do, I just, I enjoy it. I, it's um, not usually one for earth tones, but when I am, it's because they, it stands out to me. So uh, this one really just has a nice combination and it feels, it feels new. I mean, or it feels newer, I should say, perhaps because of the design, the cat, perhaps because of the layout, the way that it's kind of used in this space where I've seen some 1800s either have keys or just have it cleared off right there. Um, it's a nice keyboard. Would I like a knob on there? Yes, I would, right there, please. But can't have everything. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you wonderful folks with a stock sound test of the Ajaz AC100. I will be coming back to this keyboard, so if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please drop them down below. 
a like and a subscribe do go a long way and they're much appreciated. But for now, I want to wish you awesome people a beautiful day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keep it on.